Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 56. 56. Uh, the only player, his original number, some guy named Steve Bernier. <laughs> I didn't tell him what it was, so he had no idea what I was going to say. I did not realize that was Steve Bernier's number. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was his original number, probably, when he came up phenomenal. as a rookie. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, those, yeah. those horrible numbers that they give their That's what we're getting into these days. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Okay, so uh, this episode we're going to talk about the phenomenal start that the San Jose Sharks are off to this season. Uh, yeah, and the powerless play <laughs> that we have. Go ahead. <laughs> the brutal power play. Uh, we're going to talk about our fantasy leagues. Mm -hmm. Leagues, plural. Uh, the EASHL team and the look ahead of next week's games. Very good. You ready to start the show? I'm ready. I actually don't have equipment, so just... Roll. Boo. <laughs> This episode is going to be brought to you by Berticelli's La Villa Gourmet Italian Delicatessen. That's a mouthful. And if you want a mouthful, you should go there because the Chris combo, phenomenal. It's awesome. This is a place where a lot of the players go to. Um, Pavelski used to go there a lot. Single tier. I miss that guy. <laughs> uh, he goes there a lot. Brent Burns goes there. Um, a lot of other uh, teams. So the NFL, there's 49ers go there. I think they practically feed them every time the 49ers go on a road trip. And we'll throw up a picture right here. Uh, the Steelers were in town a couple weeks ago, and uh, they fed the entire Steelers team. They all grabbed a sandwich on their way onto the onto the plane. Nice. So, uh, great place to go. They're known for their raviolis and their sandwiches. And if you do go there, mention that you heard it from the Fin Factor. Yes, you should. And uh, they even have a little tagline, we'd feed the league. And mm -hmm. it's uh, it's true. They're feeding everybody, not just the local team. So, uh, again, thank you to our sponsor, La Villa. And uh, on with the episode. So yep. the Sharks, again, off to a phenomenal start, right? Getting all the bad games done and out of the way first. That's sure. the strategy. Yeah. They're going to go 79 games straight, right? They're, they're the new St. Louis Blues. That's what they're planning on. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, uh, not such a great start. Obviously, we're being facetious here. 0-3 uh, on uh, two games against Vegas, mm -hmm. a, uh, away and then back at home. And then, again, losing against a team like Anaheim, which isn't really what you want. Again, all these teams, Pacific Division teams, so uh, just a really a bad showing this week for the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, not not a whole lot to talk about. I mean, we'll highlight a little bit of this stuff here. But mm -hmm. um, I thought Jones looked pretty good considering, yeah. you know, he did give up, what, nine goals against Vegas. So, or one of those might have been an empty netter. But but still, like, he, I thought he played really well and the score could have been a lot worse, which is scary. Uh, scary for the Sharks in as a, as a whole team. Um, I... You know, the first game, Carlson was not there because mm -hmm. his wife just gave birth, and would, congratulations to them. Yeah. Um, I, I think, um, and Evander Kane wasn't there. And I think, not that that's a big distraction, but I think he would have helped, obviously, having an elite uh, winger being playing in that game with the Sharks are lacking so many of. Um, and I think later in that first game, we saw, uh, was it LeBanc and... Uh, Timo Meyer got hurt, and mm -hmm. so they left the game a little bit earlier. So the already depleted wings <laughs> were even yeah. worse and, and just got worse. Um, I thought Jones played really well. He was probably the highlight for me in the first game, um, considering, you know, he made a lot of saves. There was actually that game was great. I think he just got hung out to dry a lot, which we saw happen yeah. a lot last season. Yeah. But I still think he looked a lot sharper than he did at the beginning of last season. Yeah, and I think, you know, we, we said this last season as well, you know, with goals against average and save percentage. I know those are goalie stats, but to me, that's more of like a full team stat, right? And I know people, you know, save percentage is a goalie stat. Well, not really. I mean, if, if you're constantly dealing with cross creasers and constantly dealing with breakaways, odd man rushes like we saw last season, save percentage is not going to be good. I don't care who you are, right? So... Uh, the, the difference is, again, Jones is not an elite goaltender. He's a good goaltender. If you put him in situations where you would need an elite goaltender, his numbers are going to look much worse than, than they normally would. So um, we go back to Bob Bugner uh, coming in, going to be the, the catalyst for everybody playing a much more solid defensive game in front of him now. They're saying, well, Bugner's here. Why aren't we doing that? Well, it takes time, guys. So... You know, I know we had during the live before this, people are going, well, you know, what's going on? What's the problem? And it's like, yeah. well, we have the things in place that we need. Part of it, though, I think, you know, we've got rookies up and down the lineup. They're learning the new system. 
Uh, Bugner still got to work his magic uh, throughout the course of the season. I think, you know, give it, like I said in the live, a good 15, 20 games before we hit the panic button. People asking when we should hit the panic button. In my mind, they already have if they're asking that question. <laughs> uh, so, you know, again, it's just one of those things where I think, you know, they, they had a really rough week here. I'd love to see, we're going to talk about the games coming up. I'd love to see where they go uh, right after this because they did look re really frustrated after these three games. Uh, but in terms of this first game here, again, we were missing, you know, Evander Kane, which is, is rough because we we're already kind of low on wingers, as you said, and then you had two guys get injured in the middle of that game. So uh, not a fun time in Las Vegas on that one. Now, uh, you had mentioned Eric Carlson was gone because uh, for personal reasons, and the first thing that I thought of, and I know you it's a little you're scary. the same. We were talking about it yeah. I think, beforehand, <laughs> like before we knew what was going on. But. Right. We thought it was an injury. He re we, so. we thought he re-injured his groin, and he didn't want to say, I re-injured yeah. my groin, because he was making a big deal about, no, I'm back. I'm ready. Um, so he wasn't lying, right? It was actually yeah. you know, a personal thing, and it was the birth of his uh, brand new daughter, which I don't recall the name of, unfortunately. I apologize. But um, no, uh, we're just so happy for that family, uh, knowing the history. And um, you know, seeing the picture with uh, Melinda there holding uh, their, their newborn, um, really just awesome. I put on Twitter, I said my my heart just leapt out of my chest for you guys. You know, it's just, I'm, I'm just so happy for these guys. Um, so again, congratulations to uh, Melinda and Eric. I was actually able to purchase a, a card. Uh, congratulations for the, uh, the baby girl card, yeah. if you will. I'm not sure if that's the actual name you would call that. But uh, I, I, you know, signed it. Um, daughter? I, I titled it, yes, daughter. Just... I titled it Melinda and Eric, you know, right. and I went to give him a card. And it's funny because normally he walks right by uh, most most folks just, hey, thanks, hey, goodbye, you know, as he's going through practice. Uh, but he did see that there was something strange and different being held out to him. He looked up, saw it was a pink card and, you know, grabbed it. And again, so I did this with Evander Kane last season. He, I get the eye contact and that, hey, thank you. Um, so it, it's, you got that it's, it's kind of reassuring yeah. to see that, you know, these people are, you know, they are humans. Right. You know, because you, you kind of lose track of that and you forget. And just that little brief eye contact and the thank you, um, you can tell that they it, it means something to them, you know, even just coming from a fan as opposed to like a teammate or something else. Right. So, uh, really cool, and it was just one of those moments that, you know, it's enjoyable for me as a fan too. Yep, and uh, speaking of cards, mm. uh, did you see what the fans, the Sharks <laughs> fans did at the Las Vegas Stadium or arena? Uh, we'll post a picture up right here. <laughs> they, they were handing out these little business card size things, yeah. and it's, it says, thanks for the memories. And it's a picture of Melker scoring the... Oh, Goudreau. The, or, sorry, Goudreau yeah. scoring the uh, overtime winner in Game <laughs> 7. It's fantastic. Grid trolling. Unfortunately, the Sharks got beat up. Right. But, you know, beforehand, it's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I love that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, very good. Well done. Whoever thought yeah. that one up and uh, put the money up to make those cards, good on you. Well um, worth it. Well played. Yes. Well worth it. Absolutely. That is for sure. So... Uh, moving on from that, where are we going here now? The next game against Back Vegas. To Vegas. <laughs> Again, at home. Uh, Sharks did not look good. I feel like their home openers, they don't usually play very well. There's, okay. just, there's so much kind of pregame stuff. It's, it's kind of drags, and it's not like a normal night. So it just, it's a lot different feeling. And I think it just drags for the players, and then just mm -hmm. they come out sluggish to me. They always come out sluggish. So again, they gave up an early goal. Yeah. They just didn't look right, and Vegas was all over them, ready, ready for revenge. For them. Yeah. But, yeah, thanks for revenge in October. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens later in the year. But that is true. <laughs> get all Still too early. You don't like giving away points to Pacific Division right. rivals. But, again, if you're going to have your brain farts, do in the first three games. Yep. So uh, there's kind of the solace in that one. You, you'd right. be done with that game. Uh, you throw that one out the window just now. going or? back, though, to okay. Jones. In that game, uh, he gave up, uh, it, I think it was four or five. I can't remember. I know the score was five, but I can't remember if it was an empty netter. But, okay. Um, the only soft goal I really saw was that one short he uh, threw the five hole. Mm -hmm. I thought the rest of the game he played really well and st stopped a lot more other shorthanded chances. So I thought, again, Jones, to me, Jones has been the best player in those two games, those first two games, mm -hmm. even though he gave up so many goals. Right. Um, it could have been a lot worse. So uh, good on him to come back, back to back, to start the season and, and look sharp mm -hmm. and look good. Um, so I think what we've been preaching, I think, this summer is yeah. that we think Jones and Dell's numbers are going to be up a lot higher than they were uh, last year. People were a lot. People were, there's a lot of people still, even in the live yeah, show that yeah. we had, were worried about Jones and yeah. Dell. I'm, I'm not going to say a lot higher necessarily, but I do think higher. Um, I think we have enough rookies that are kind of maybe pull us back down a little bit um, to where I was hoping we would be. Uh, but 
you know, I think once the system kind of gets in place and they start learning that, the team, yes, as a whole, will be looking a little bit better and you're going to see his numbers go up. But I do think that the rookies are going to make enough mistakes that it kind of pulls us back just a bit. Yeah. Uh, but there was one rookie that you looked at in that game that you thought played a phenomenal game in Leon Bergman. Right. I thought he looked pretty good. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of a third slash fourth line guy. Yeah. A lot of energy comes out. Uh, adds a lot of grit to the Sharks lineup, which I don't think they have enough of. Um, he kind of mixes it up in there after the, you know, in the scrum kind of after mm -hmm. the whistle blows and kind of, you know, other teams are looking for him now so that they know when he's on the ice. I think the Sharks need a little bit more of that. I thought he played that really well. I think he's really good on the four check and he, he puts a lot of pressure on teams and, and gets some turnovers. He's a good skater um, and a decent sized guy that he could throw his body around and, and be felt by the other teams. So mm -hmm. I thought he had a decent game too. So then the Sharks move on to Anaheim, and it's the last game that we have without Evander Kane from his three-game suspension. So he was out of the lineup. Mm -hmm. um, really that right wing looking very depleted. You've got just Kevin LeBanc, who's kind of the mainstay, and then the rest of them, so, uh, your, your Tykin. Yeah. Uh, Brzezinski actually uh, slotted in. I thought Brzezinski and your Tykin, by the way, both had uh, excellent showings. They didn't do anything point-wise, but I, mean, I thought they played really well for their roles and whatnot. So I was happy with that. Um, but, you know... It, it just it was another game where you kind of figure you should win this one. This is an Anaheim Ducks team that's not too great. Now, we have enough firepower. We should be able to, to give these guys a little bit of a whooping, and we end up losing 3-1. to one. I do think that Gibson played a little out of his mind in yeah. that game. I think the Sharks had a lot of elite chances that just could not finish mm -hmm. because one reason or another, either Gibson stopped it or they just kind of missed the net. Right. Um, there was one play I remember seeing where Hurdle had – had him dead to rights and tried to put it around him. And if he got it up, it would have gone over his pad and mm -hmm. he got his leg just stretched out just enough to stop it. Yeah. So I think a uh, Anaheim team with a healthy Gibson is a little scarier, but we know, we talked about this last year, Gibson is going to get hurt. <laughs> he gets hurt at some point every single season. Which, by the way, I will not be calling it this season. <laughs> I, caught, I caught lightning in a bottle there and uh, I don't think I could do it twice and I don't want anybody looking at me saying it's my fault. Again, if you don't so. remember what he's talking about, he... You basically said the same thing last year, right before the Sharks played them. Last time right. around, what I said was, what's going to happen? We're, well, I don't know. It was and the week ahead. Yeah. We were looking at the week ahead. That's right. I was looking at the week ahead. I said, well, what am I looking for out of that game? I don't know. Gibson hasn't been hurt yet, has he? I don't know. I'm just saying. And then he got hurt, like In literally game. that game. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, just crazy. Um, I, I'm not doing that again. I'm not going to call it So, to again. me, <laughs> Gibson, compared to Jones, Gibson is an elite goalie. Yes. He just cannot stay healthy. That's fair. So I, I I thought he played really well. He stood out to me as as he won the game right. for Anaheim more than uh, the players kind of the Anaheim skaters won it. So fair enough. I, I think Dell actually stood out for the Sharks, but in a bad way, right? So uh, there are a couple miscues with the puck that Dell made. One of them was uh, a, the very a bad first pass. Goal. Yeah, the very yeah. first goal it was a bad pass. Uh, ends up getting picked off. And then the pass goes out in front, and uh, Michael Delzaster, I mean Delzato, uh, <laughs> puts the puck in the net. Um, first one he's had in a while, I think. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, um, so that was just kind of a gaffe. There's a difference, though, between mistakes and effort. So that was one mistake. Another mistake, uh, Ryan Getzlaff gets a breakaway somehow. Um, I guess the wheelchair Vlasic. was really flying. Yeah. Vlasic um, was on a bad line change. Okay. And it wasn't necessarily his fault. I yeah. think it was, it was kind of miscommunication, like if he should go off or not. Mm -hmm. He got stuck kind of in no man's land where he's about to come off and then just tries to skate yeah. back. He's out of position. Gets left. It's like Joe Thornton getting a breakaway. Like nobody's, everybody should be catching him, right? <laughs> yeah. And they couldn't catch him. Burns was gassed. He was at the end of the shift. He couldn't get there. Right. Um, and Getzlaff put a nice move on Dell. Dell was playing very aggressive out of his crease practically, and he just kind of skated around him right. and, and put it in. So it was a good move by Getzlaff. But, again, Getzlaff should not be getting a breakaway or getting behind your defense like that and right. getting a breakaway. Yeah. Um, so that was another mistake. So to me, like this game was a game of mistakes where the Sharks beat themselves. Yeah. Gibson beat them because mm -hmm. they couldn't finish. But the Sharks beat themselves by giving up those three goals. Absolutely. And the third goal. So yeah, that, that's now this is the difference because so we just talked about some of the mistakes the Sharks made. The third goal against uh, this is a lack of effort. This is not a mistake. This is when you take a look at the replay and you see Kevin LeBanc gliding. Now again, we had talked about this in the live that you know he had just come off of a long power play shift. He was probably gassed, very tired, and I understand that. At the NHL level, you move your legs, even if you can't go very fast. You move your legs. You never just glide right behind a guy who's got the puck. In your zone, in a high danger area, you don't do that. So for me, there's a very big difference between the mistake 
and the effort. The most appalling thing to me is that the lack of effort comes from a guy who signed a one-year, $1 million contract for the purpose of showing the Sharks <laughs> and potentially the rest of the league, if, he, if the, the Sharks can't re-sign him, that he can be a player that can be a 200-foot uh, player, right? That he can be a difference maker. He can take on a larger role. This is a guy who's betting on himself, and he essentially goes into full controller disconnect mode. <laughs> Like, full on, just coast with your stick out. Like, that's... I mean, to me, I feel like that was like a beer leaguer move. Yeah. And even then, you'd still yell at the guy in your beer league. Yes. Like, get your... Move your feet. Yeah, move your feet. Like, come on. Right? So, I I, I can't believe that he didn't get benched for that. The yeah, board said, did not... I, I was shocked. His ice time was over 20 minutes still. I thought for sure he would have sat and rode the pine for the rest of the game. But he did not. Partially, I think it was because it was only 3-1. to one. The Sharks were still in the game. And they needed his offensive punch. And mm-hmm. so who else are you going to put out there? Right. 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 So I think that was a big reason. But well, still, that was bad. Yeah. Really it, bad. It, and, 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 you know, echoing the fans' frustration. Oh, this is a, a fan show, right? We're not, we're not journalists or anything. We're not analysts. We're fans. Um, so echoing the same frustrations that you guys have, um, you know, coming from us. But also not just, you know, the fans, but the players themselves as well. We saw right after that goal... Uh, Eric Carlson uh, showing his frustration, yeah. almost decapitating, decapitating Aaron Dell. Luckily, in Dell the process. Was out of the goal, bit, yeah. I think he saw it coming, and <laughs> and Carlson just basically tomahawked his, yeah. his stick right on top of the yeah. crossbar. And I don't know if he actually smashed it or not. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The, the, the it, act he, itself it yeah. was, yeah, he he really yeah. destroyed his stick. And you know, it's again Eric Carlson. And I, I've had posts about this in the past. I didn't put this one on Twitter, but I put it on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, where you know he was going up against Aaron Dell on a one-on-one, and Dell shut him down, and he was very frustrated with himself and his inability to put the puck in the net on their backup goaltender. He literally threw his stick, and it hit the ceiling. <laughs> I'm he not threw it into the netting. He right? threw it right. above the netting. Oh, it wow. hit the ceiling. Yeah. You think I'm joking? It hit the ceiling. Well, it's on our Instagram account. <laughs> yes, it is. So if you want to go to the, our Instagram <laughs> account at Finn Factor, because right. mm, kid, um, <laughs> or at uh, the Finn Factor for uh, Facebook. Pretend to plug it all. Let's yeah. plug it all. Okay, and the other one is at the Finn Factor for Twitter account, but it's not there. So go on our Instagram account <laughs> and check it out over there. Yes, you see Eric Carlson and Facebook. It's uh, on Facebook as a yes, kickstarter. Launching his stick into the stratosphere. And if anyone would like to make a GIF out of that, uh, so that the stick is like spinning into space, like after he throws it, I would love to. <laughs> have that please um anyway funny (laughs) it would be hilarious anyway this is a guy who's very passionate okay it's it's not um he you know is a hothead he loses his mind he's just very passionate about what he expects of himself and what he expects of his team in this case and i'm not saying that he smashed a stick because kevin lebank was gliding but i wouldn't be surprised and seeing how he reacted again very much the same frustrations that all the fan base had seeing a player like that and losing to a team like that uh, and going 0 and 3 you know in the first three games this team is much better than that and I think that they're going to show it come the next game we'll talk about that later well so. I think a big part of the frustration is also coming from the powerless play as you put it ooh I did put it that way you did it's written on the board I wrote it on the board powerless plays I'm the, the witty one anyway, uh, go ahead <laughs> <laughs> they the Sharks have given up three shorthanded goals <laughs> and have scored zero power play goals on 14 power play opportunities. Mm-hmm. That is bad. They're basically negative for three, negative three for 14. Yeah, if you think about it that way, instead Just, of 0 for 14 with three uh, shorthanded oh, goals, it's uh, terrible. Super key grip Joe called it right. minus three for 14, which I thought was very clever. So. It's just bad. Yeah. So the power play needs to get almost I don't know about revamped. They just they need something different. You used a specific word, and I like that word. Go I ahead. think they're predictable. Fair. I think if you narrowed, if you can put use one word for their power play, it's predictable. I think every team knows how to defend against it. I think that's the problem. Um, it, everyone keeps it gets snuffed out. Yeah. Um, what I do like is they're trying to set up burns on the one timer now, which we've been preaching last season for yeah. them to do. Um, their their power play did change because Pavelski's gone. He's no longer in front to tip the pucks. That was kind of their strategy before, yeah. their main strategy mm-hmm. before him. Now it seems like they're really trying to feed Burns the puck, which is great, but it's also too predictable. I think it needs to be worked around and changed in some way. See, I don't know what the answer is completely, but I think it needs yeah. work. See, and, and in Washington, you've got them doing the same thing with Ovechkin, right? The, the difference is you can't stop it with Ovechkin. You right. know it's coming. You can't stop it, right? Um, with, with Burns on the wing, 
I'm not saying his shot isn't hard because he could put a hole through the wall if he wanted to, but it's it's one of those things where you know we we didn't run that all the time, so maybe it's going to take a little bit more retooling to the point where we get that. But yeah, I, I like seeing Eric Carlson at the top mm-hmm. and then feeding over to Burns, right? I, I do like seeing that a lot more. And it's I know if we had Pavelski, I feel like we'd be going and doing the exact same thing that we always did: Burns on the right or at the top, mm-hmm. and then firing it in to uh, to Pav's wing down low to tip it and then crash, right? Right. Um, so I do like that we've changed it up. But even after changing it up again. We've seen other teams do the exact same thing, and it is a bit predictable, and it's not quite unstoppable yet. So a little bit of retooling maybe, it it might become unstoppable, which would be great because minus three for 14, we need to catch up, right? So we're we're a little behind. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the other teams are just they know those cross ice passes to Burns are coming. Yeah. And so they really get their sticks and their bodies in those lanes and they're they're stopping everything and clearing it too yeah. quickly. So one of the things you do to change it, maybe you change your strategy, obviously Pavs isn't there. Uh you, you know, you go to a system where you've got Eric Carlson passing it over to Burns for the one time. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing that might need to change, and people have been calling for this for a while now, is Steve Spot. Steve Spot is in the hot seat, or I was calling it the spot seat. Again, I'm the witty one. Um, so <laughs> He'll be here all night. I'll be here all night, folks. Actually, I won't. We're going to leave. But, uh, yeah, just, you know, is he in the hot seat? So we're kind of curious to you guys, and something we haven't asked for in a while. Please put in the comments down below, do you think that Steve Spot's in the hot seat right now? And I think that might be the case when... You're not only going 0 for 14, you're giving up shorthanded goals. It's pretty embarrassing. So I don't know. Is it a player execution thing? Is it a system thing? Go ahead and put your comments down there. We'd love to see what you guys have to say. Yep. Very good. All right. Okay. So moving on from that, what's the next thing we're going to talk about now? Uh, let's talk about the week ahead. Yeah. Okay. So we got three games this week. Tuesday is in Nashville. And I I talked about this in the live a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think I feel like the Sharks always played pretty well in Nashville. Maybe not. Maybe not because someone else in the comments wrote that, that we don't. Okay. But I was like, I feel like we do pretty pretty <laughs> decent in Nashville. Or maybe it's because we always beat them in the playoffs or whenever we play them. So I I think um, I think they're going to come out firing on all cylinders. You never want to be the team playing a team that is O oh, and whatever on a streak because they're coming out and doing everything. Yeah to the T, like perfect, because they have to, because their coach is going to be all over them. So I feel like uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Nashville to try and weather the storm, because I think the Sharks are going to come out and playing extremely hard. That's my belief. Yeah. Maybe it's a little bit hopeful, but I, but we have Kane back. You know Kane's going to come back, yeah. and he's going to... I bet Kane's going to score at least two goals. There's a prediction for okay. you. Right there. I think he's been itching. This is his, this is his season opener. Yeah. So he's going to want to, you know... Like show his teammates like, hey, sorry yeah. for putting you in a bad spot. I'm going to come out and do everything I can to get a win, the first win of the season. So I think Kane's going to have a heck of a game. I sure hope so. I think uh, we need everybody to have one heck of a game this time around. I'd love to go into Nashville just angry. You know, just get it. angry Joe is always the best Joe, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, I would, I would love to see that. I would love to see us come out storming. Um, but, you know, who knows? Uh, again, we've got a lot of rookies that are still in the lineup. We've got a lot of guys that are still learning uh, the systems and I had put it up on on Twitter I'm not going to name names and we talked about it during the live but there was one player who's been with the Sharks for a year uh, or I should say more than a year I guess but you know he, he was in the wrong spot and uh, he was trying to do the right thing again effort versus mistakes he was putting the effort in he was just in the wrong spot during that that drill that they were doing and he got full on torched like verbally <laughs> accosted. I mean, it was, yeah, Pete DeBoer let him have it. He told him, you know, you've been here for a year, you know, blah, 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 blah. And uh, uh, this is swear words that I'm not going to say. Um, <laughs> so you've been here, I'll teach the young guys. I'll teach these younger guys, basically telling them, I don't you get off if you're not going to pay attention. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, he was giving it to him. So these guys that are saying that, you know, DeBoer needs to, like, throw a table across the room and he needs to be tough on them and all that. So he is, trust me, he I is. Think, I think when people when they say that, they look at him on the bench during a game and he's pretty calm yes right and so they think that he just doesn't care right and and don't mistake that for for not caring because in practice he's yeah. he's on them so it i'm sure in the locker room he's on them too yeah so i during don't, yeah during the game there's a thing called composure right and as a head coach of a hockey club you need to have that not everyone's john tortorella no and there's what's that one there is some some clip that's out there a guy like full-on he's tearing his shirt off and he's like throwing his tie picks up the bench throws it on the you're not going to see that out of Pete DeBoer, okay? You're no. going to see him yell at the refs, bark at the refs for bad calls that he calls that he feels are bad, at least. 
um, but you're not going to see him like verbally on the bench just going at his players hard. Um, I, he's got some level of composure during the game. Now, when they go back in the locker room, who knows? But um, as far as on the bench in front of the cameras, in front of the fans, you're not going to see that stuff out of him. He keeps it pretty well tight when he's on the bench. And I think that's, you know, everybody's got a different style. He, again, yeah. not John Tortorella. And I think that that works for him. That's the way he likes doing it. Um, it's not working right now <laughs> because we're 0-3. But you know what? His tenure here has been pretty good in terms right. of the amount of games won. So I say, you know, we give him a little bit of a, of a, a pass on that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. just let him do his job. I'm, I'm happy with it. So moving on from Nashville, they're going to be going into Chicago, and that happens mm -hmm. on Thursday? Thursday in okay. Chicago, and I think Chicago's a better team than they were last year. Um, their defense is still kind of suspect with uh, the big contracts of Seabrook and, and Duncan Keith, who are just not what they used to be. They used to be the, the best pairing oh, yeah. in the league and nowhere near that anymore. So, um, And they're stuck with them, I think, for another few years. So anyway, they're, they're okay. Chicago's... Uh, offense, they have some punch. Yeah, um, they got about two scoring lines now that are pretty decent. Uh, Debrinket and Kane and Taves mm -hmm. and some couple other guys. So um, they're gonna be they're gonna be tough, but I think still beatable. Sure. So that yeah, Crawford <laughs> hey, Crawford's health is okay. He's he's a good goalie, but his health has been kind of suspect for the over the last season or two so going going back to what we were talking about with nashville coming out firing on all cylinders i i feel like that's one of those times where this isn't this is different from a trap game but where you you blow all your energy because you're just so mad and upset about how everything started and you just demolish a team maybe we do maybe we don't in nashville i don't know but i feel like you have that build up and you just unload right yeah. and then you you have a day of rest and then you have another game i feel like that's that's going to be a good test. If they blow out Nashville, if they blow out Nashville, can they go in Chicago and still have some energy left to be able to, yeah. to at least make a good game out of it, right? I still like have PTSD from Chicago's goal song. Just I heard it so <laughs> many times. I hate it. It gets stuck in your head. Yeah. Da, 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 Oh, that's terrible. See, and, and then he head. just sings it. Now everyone listening, including <laughs> myself, have it stuck in our heads. Just hate it. Hate it. <sighs> Anyway, yeah. moving on from moving Chicago. On from, thank you. Now we're coming back. <laughs> the Sharks are going to come back on Sunday and play against Calgary. Now, I looked at Calgary's schedule, and Calgary has a pretty tough schedule this week. Uh, they're playing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And Saturday they're playing in Vegas. So that's going to be a very brutally tough game, yeah. physically uh, demanding game. Um, and then they're going to come into the Sharks the next day, probably fly in that night, I would think, and then play the next day. So... That should be a win for the Sharks. If the Sharks come out flat against Calgary, that's going to be bad. And it's not necessarily you always win after a back-to-back, yeah. -back, but this is going to be their fourth game in six nights. That's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. And they're traveling the whole time. Yeah. So um, I, that should be a win on Sunday. So I think two of three should be wins. Slam okay. dunk wins. How about that? That's fair. That would I give us a, four points out of his possible six. That's a good prediction right there. I think that's a, that's a solid prediction. Two out of three in the next week here coming up. Um, look for it. So I think you called earlier in the live, you called the Calgary game a scheduled win. Yes. It should be a W. There should be no question about that, right? You're sticking with that. That's what they call it, a scheduled yeah. win. You're you sticking with the schedule, that, yeah. yeah. Sharks will okay. be on three days rest. <clears throat> they'll be on zero days rest. This is very true. And they'll come in off of, like you said, a Vegas team who's pretty heavy and likes to bang the body. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that is the case. Maybe Vegas can actually do us a favor this time <laughs> around. Who knows? But uh, there are two little things that we want to talk about. We're going to be doing this at the end of every show now. Uh, the first thing is the fantasy leagues that Aaron's running. Fantasy leagues. So there are two leagues, and we're running them through fan track. So I'm going to show you. Here's the standings from League One up here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a look of all the matchups right now. So this week's kind of funky because normally we would end on a Monday. So Sunday nights are the last games, but because the the season just started for the hot for the NHL, um, it was started on Wednesday. It's like a half week, so the first week of fantasy is actually like ten days long. So these aren't complete yet. We'll f I'll look at them next Sunday, and you'll see where everyone's really standing. But there's some good there's some great names in here. Uh, Patience is wearing Finn is who I'm playing against. This okay. week, uh, Tavares's pajamas <laughs> is good. Norwegian Sharks. I think the guy's actually from Norway. Um, the world's okayest fancy team. Bugner Blue Line, Hurdles Turtles, Pavelski's Revenge, Low Street Sharks, Air Jaws, Dana's Hotshot Squad, and Razor Teeth. Not bad. 
Yeah, it was a decent. Bad. So that's that's a look at League One. Now let's jump over to League Two, and I'm playing against the Jumbotrons <laughs> this week, and I'm up right now five three. Um, there's Hooby Dooby Doo, <laughs> Prog Pirates, Teenage Mutant Ninja Hurdles, Ottawa Sixty Sevens. They must be a uh, Couture fans, right? Gallant's right thumb, and that's just a picture of Gallant's right thumb with the thumbs up. Wonderful. Uh, SJS, Carmichael Zamboners, Killa Cali, Team Benson, and Homestead Hurricanes. Kind of random. But, um, yeah, that's... Next week will be a little bit better. We'll see in the standings where everyone is, and uh, and I'll highlight, you know, who's winning and maybe talk a little smack. Cool. So, uh, the last little bit that we're going to do at the end of every episode is dealing with the EA SHL... Uh, NHL 20 teams that we have set up both on Xbox that's through our buddy Patrick Cabral and on PS4 that's through Aaron and myself um, we're going to go ahead and post the I guess stats for uh, with the, we'll sure. take a screenshot we'll it's, post the stats you know games played goals assists yeah. whatever else it's the team we'll roster of, ever, of players yes exactly so we'll throw that up on the screen and uh, we can actually do that right now and uh, oh lo and behold who's that at the top oh is, is that who's this guy is that me <laughs> yeah that's me just just saying What's the points per game? I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they're pretty good. It's not bad. Mine's pretty good, too. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. So, uh, yeah. So, we'll go ahead and, and uh, we'll be putting that image up uh, at the end of each show. Um, also, if you guys have any clips of, uh, you know, nice goals or uh, yeah. maybe some really good plays, uh, I guess it doesn't have to be goals, but some nice dangles would be sweet, right. too. Let's not forget the Xbox team. Here's yeah. the Xbox team. <laughs> There's not that many people on right now. There's only, I think, two guys that yeah. are uh, that have played. So uh, if you are an Xbox and, and you want to join, uh, please join the league and look. just so search for TFF yeah. is the abbreviation. That's the easiest way to find it. And make sure your region, region. is, was it North America or West region? Something. It? Pick one of those ones and then yeah. get back to us. Because someone was trying to search in the wrong region, couldn't find us, and that's yeah. why. So th there's just the uh, the stats for, for both of those, Xbox and PS4. And again, make sure that you go ahead and uh, send in any clips that you have of some sweet goals or some uh, really nice dangles or whatever the case is. If you play goal and you got some really nice saves, we'd love to see those too. And yep. we'll kind of get like a clip of the week kind of thing going. So uh, we're going to go ahead and roll one of those clips for you right now. Denies the shooter with a big star. Fighting towards the net. Does what he does best. Great goal from a really great guy. Pretty nice little goal there. So, um, anyway, I guess that's the end of the show. That's it. Is it not? Okay. That's all we got. Just want to remind everybody a couple of things. One, uh, please do visit La Villa. Uh, they are phenomenal. The sandwich, the Chris combo. I'm telling you, the Chris combo is phenomenal. I've made it's made a believer out of me because I was like, hey, it can't be that good. Come on, everybody just get no. It's yeah. really that good. It's, and if it's you're there so on a non-game day, that you could possibly see some sharks in there because they go in there a lot too. That is throwing them out true. there. So go ahead and check them out there in Willow Glen. It's really easy to find. Mm -hmm. um, also, the store. Uh, if you go to thefinfactor.com, hit those three little buttons or three little lines in the top corner there, and it says support the show because that is what you are doing supporting the show so that we can continue to do this. So if you like this, help us continue to do this by supporting this uh, <laughs> through that link. Buy some shirts. We have them in teal, gray, black. We have the black women's uh, deep V cut. We also have stickers and we have hats, which by the way, I will put this up on the screen as well. We saw uh, some kid oh, yeah. uh, with a Fin Factor hat up on uh, the TV screen there, which awesome. is awesome. I, I, I almost jumped off the couch. like I, I was like, what? You know, yeah. It was just crazy seeing uh, someone with our, our gear on, on TV there. It was just really cool. It was, it was brief. It was like a split second, but I caught it. So uh, I don't know who that kid is. If, uh, if you know this kid, if you are this kid, uh, let us know because uh, that was pretty cool. And we appreciate you wearing our gear and, uh, and supporting the show. So yep. thank you for that. Anything else you want to plug here? I think we're good. Okay, yeah. so uh, that is all for this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we'll see you next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts.
You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.